Yo, so what is up everybody? Welcome to the Noano Legacy. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate all of the love and support that I've gotten thus far. Let's continue to push the message to as many people as we possibly can because look, it's, it's very quite simple. No one's a no one. I truly, truly feel that way. And my my goal with this platform is really to be able to accomplish three things. One of them is to help as many people as I possibly can. Number two, I do number one by executing number two, which is to educate as many people as I possibly can. And number three really is to inspire you to take action towards your dreams on a daily basis. But yo, so today what I really wanted to tackle uh, was something that I'm, I'm really, really excited to talk about because I know I've had this conversation with many 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 people and so what we're uh, we're going to tackle today is military driven right because that's currently what i do i'm active duty i've been active duty military for about six years now i've got another two and then we'll see what the good lord takes me from there and so what i want to what i really want to discuss and when i say discuss i mean i speak you listen and hopefully take notes and then see where we go from there. But this mindset of do I stay in or do I get out? And I know a lot of people kind of struggle with that, especially those that are, you know, getting towards the end of their contract and they're really not sure because they didn't set themselves up properly. There you have it. That's really the reason why so many people struggle with the dilemma of do I stay in or do I get out? And personally, the way I feel about it, I feel like a lot of people in the in the Navy, you know, I, th I think most people in the military too because I've had different conversations with different people in different branches. But what we do when we're in the military is we have this philosophy of or this ideology that the Navy is taking care of us, right? The military is taking care of us. We get food money at a certain rank you get house money. Regardless of rank you are, regardless of rank you are, regardless of what rank you are, you always have a place to sleep. And what we do is we get so accustomed to this, this lifestyle of having everything taken care of. So then when time comes for us to be big boys and big girls and actually go out into the world and pursue something that we are passionate about, we don't know how to. No one ever really talked us into oh well make sure you have your ducks in the line before you, it, you they have these conversations with us only when it's time for us to actually make the transition and at that point depending on who you are and whatever it is you want to get into it may be too late versus what you should be doing the whole time you're in unless you are unless you come from a lineage of I'm going to serve in the military and your mother and your father and your grandfather and grandmother and you have a long lineage of, of people that served in the military and you know without a shadow of a doubt that you're going to do 20 years, 20 plus. Even then I would still do I would still do this. You should be setting things up for you while you were in the military so that when you get out and you do decide to do 20 years, you're set up to where you don't have to go to work. So many people get out after 20 years. 20 years of serving this great country. You get out and you go get another job. And look, I'm not knocking it. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Because retiring at 40, not a lot of people have that luxury. So if you have a steady income from the military, as well as getting a second job, well, not a second job, getting another primary job and doing that full time, you know, you've got a nice piece of change coming in, coming into the mailbox every single week, or I'm sorry, every, every single month. And that's cool. I'm not knocking that. I just know that's not for me. Personally, I know that's, that, I know that's not something that's going to make me happy. When I decide to retire at 40, I want to be done. Now, granted, I'm a different breed. Something I'm extremely passionate about is real estate. So I know even when I'm 40, I'm still going to be wanting to look at, I'm still going to want to be looking at deals. I'm still going to want to help other people grow their real estate business and things like that. So when I'm 40, I might still be working, but that's because I'm, I'm going to be doing something I'm passionate about, not something that I have to do to provide for my family at that time. And again, I'm not knocking it. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. All I'm saying is it's not me. And for those of us who are getting out after their first enlistment or your second enlistment, what have you been doing to set yourself up? What have you been doing so that you can find something outside of the military that you would enjoy doing? And instead of getting out of uh, the shitty job that you had while you were in the military and transitioning to another terrible one when you're out. 
Because you don't have options. Because you didn't do your job and you didn't connect with people. You didn't do your job and network. No, I get it. Some people think, oh man, I'm overseas. How am I supposed to network? I'm overseas. I'm going back to the States. Who can I network with? I guarantee you there's somebody that you're overseas with that's a civilian that knows somebody that's back in the States. Instead of going partying all the time, Find somebody that you can network with, somebody that goes and works with you if they're a civilian contractor, somebody who, uh, who's transitioning out. This means if you're enlisted, you can talk to the officers as well and see what kind of jobs they have lined up if they're getting out after your, your captain or your XO or whatever, whatever they're called for you in other, in other branches of military. Talk to people, see what they have going on. Because I guarantee you, everybody likes to talk about themselves. Every single body. One thing I'm learning as a real estate agent is that the more people I talk to, the more I realize that the saying people like to talk about themselves is very, very, very true. And, and I'm interested in 90 something percent of what a lot of people have to say. So I'm just going to continue to ask because I really like to gauge people. And I like to see where their minds are in regards to certain aspects of life. So it's easy for me to sit back and listen to somebody talk. That's easy for me. Not everybody has that mentality and I understand that. But at the same time, you have to be forward thinking. And I've been in two years. I know this isn't for me. There's nothing that is going to change my mind. I know I'm getting out in two years. What should I be doing right now? What can I be putting into place right now so that when I do transition out, I'm set. I'm good. I have nothing to worry about other than execution, of course. Now, that's not saying that when you get out, everything's going to be perfect. That's not saying that when you get out, everything is going to be aligned up perfectly. But knowing that you set yourself up for success, period. That's what it comes down to. That's what matters. What I've noticed is we get so accustomed to the Navy and the military taking care of us and taking care of everything we possibly need that we don't think life outside of the military until that time comes. There's no reason, there is no reason why men and women that serve this country get out and have nothing to show for it. I take that back. There shouldn't be a reason. There shouldn't be a reason. There always is. Of course there always is. But there shouldn't be a reason. While we're in the military, we need to be seeking because they damn sure don't give it to us. We need to be seeking financial education. Because like I said, they damn sure don't give it to us. They hold all these trainings about a bunch of different stuff that are relevant to what we do and sometimes not relevant to what we do. But they don't give us financial education training. And what you'll hear certain people say is, well, you know, have, you have all of that available to you on the base. You just go talk to people on the base. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. Even though it's on the base and it's accessible, we have to go search for it, which is fine. I'm cool with it because I know I'm that person. I know I'm hungry and I want more, so I'm going to go look for some stuff. But for those who just have no idea that it's even available, then what? Then those are the people that are not set up for success when they get out. Because Lord knows, this military thing is not for everybody. It's really, really not. And once you sign on that dotted line, your ass ain't going nowhere. But that's fine. As long as you set yourself up while you're in. But like I said, I get it. Not everybody knows. You can't really fault somebody for not knowing because you don't know what you don't know. But that's why people like me and the guys that I work with, we do what we do so that you have the, edu the education. So that you have the education that you need. My philosophy is simple. If you serve this country, you damn sure depend, not depend. Say that again. That was very theatrical and I fit all the way up. My philosophy is simple. If you serve this country, you damn sure deserve a piece of it. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. Personally, that's, that's how I feel about the whole situation. But I know everybody's different. Not everybody sees things the way I see them. Not everybody looks through the lens that I look through. But we have to stop signing another contract to stay in even though we're unhappy because we're not set up for success start looking into ways you can invest your money other than just the tsp while you're inside the military start doing research and understand if i save up x amount of dollars even though i'm going to be stationed in california i can still invest in places like florida places like indianapolis places like texas and even then, when you move to California or you move to Virginia or whatever state you, you just so happen to land, 
Stop throwing your money away, renting an apartment complex, and splitting the rent with somebody that you're cool with. How about instead, one of you, if not, not, not both of you, not both of you, how about you be the person that makes sure that your ducks are all in a line, all in a row, that makes sure you have everything pretty much set up so that you can get a house when you go to California, or Virginia, or Florida, or North Carolina, or wherever the hell other military branch members are located. How about you be the person to get that set up so that when you do go to your next duty station and you do have somebody that you want to room with, you have a place not only to live, but you have a place that you're putting money into said place and you're able to get that equity back. Because after X amount of years, of course, the first couple years, the first few years, all that goes, most of it, not all of it, I have to get this right, right? Most of it goes to the interest. And you can look at an amortization schedule when you're getting a home or even just to crunch some fancy numbers, you can do that and see how much is going to the principal, how much is going to your interest. Your principal is if the $450,000 home in California is what you want, you get a loan for $450,000, $450, the principal is the four fifty. dollars The interest is the amount the bank is going to make. So for the first few years, the bank is, the, <clears throat> the bank is taking most of it because they need to make sure that they make their money. But getting back to what I'm saying is, when you have payments that are going towards the principal, you now have equity. And after a certain amount of time, you can pull out that equity. Oh, it's so beautiful. You can pull out that equity and spend it on whatever you really want to spend it on. Primarily, what I'm going to spend mine on when I get my house this year is going to be investment properties in Texas. I'm talking to people now to see who, who do I know in Texas that's looking for a place to live that doesn't want to be in an apartment. Which one of my friends wants to live in a home? I'll buy the home. I'll buy it. But we should all be thinking that way. We should all be thinking, man, I'm in the military. I have the VA benefit. That's zero down. And depending on who you work with and who you work with knows what the hell they're doing, like we do here at Romeo Echo, roll certain fees into the loan. That way you can truly get in with no money down. But it just depends on who you know and how, they, how well they know what they do.